Hey guys, welcome to the 27th C Sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you um, how to use indexers. So all you're going to need for this tutorial is a button and a class with some sort of an array inside of it. Here I just have a string array with three elements, Adam, Bob, and Joe. And you can have like an integer array or a bool array or anything you want, but I'm just going to use a string array. Now the first step to creating your indexer is deciding on an access modifier. I'm going to make it public. And then you're going to want to have the type of it. And since this is a string array right here, we're going to use string. But if you had like an integer array, then you'd use int. So, see what I mean? So, I'm just going to type string right there. And then instead of giving um, your indexer a name, you're going to use the keyword for this. And then following that, you're going to want to put two brackets. And now inside of these brackets, you're going to want to have a parameter. And you have to have a parameter. And as you can see right there, it says indexes must have at least one parameter. So what we're going to make it is the index that we want um, to access inside of our array right here. So we're just going to put int index. And that's usually what you're going to want to put it. But there are some instances where you're going to want to use something else. And you can use multiple parameters, just like anything else. So just like if you want to pass like a string parameter in, then we can do that. All right, so just like the properties, you're going to want to use the keyword git and set. And instead of just having them have this, you must um, set them to have uh, curly braces. You must um, tell the compiler what this in what you're going to do with this index and how the user will um, read the information out of this array right here. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're just going to have it return the index of the array that we passed through here. So it's going to be my array, and then we're going to access the index we passed through as a parameter. So whenever the user tries to read from this um, index right here, they'll specify the index that they want to read it from. So if they put like zero in here, then it would return the zeroth element in this array. So it'd get Adam, and then that's how we would read it. And to set it, we're gonna wanna put um, uh, the index of the array that was specified. So we're gonna access that element. So we're gonna do my array, and then we'll just do index. And then we'll set that equal to the value that the user sets it equal to. So this is just the same um, concept as when we used um, properties. So this value is equal to whatever the user tries to set um, this equal to. And you can do more of this, like if you wanted to like check to see if this was like valid or something, you wanted to check if it was like an empty string or something like that, well you can do that too. But this is all we're going to do for right now. So now when we go back to the form, in order to access this indexer, you're first going to want to create a new instance of your class. And the name of our class is my class. So it's going to type my, or my class. So we're going to see this new my class. All right, now in order to access the indexer, you're just going to want to type the name of your class, that you, the name of the instance of your class, and then you're going to want to put a bracket, and then see right there, now we get the parameter that we um, put in the indexer right there. So now we can just choose the index that we want to access. I'm going to choose zero because that my name is Adam and I want to access the element Adam. And we're just going to have it be, this be displayed in the message box. So we're going to do message box dot show and we'll just retrieve this element. Click this button, we should get a message box that says Adam. Yep. And if we were to change this to one, we should get a message box that says Bob right here. Yep. And you can also, like I said, change this. So if you wanted to be able to um, write this, we just access the chain or choose the index that we want to access. So we're going to choose the first element, and then we're going to want to set that equal to. I don't know. We'll set it equal to um, Dylan. I hope that's how you spell the name, Dylan. And yeah, so now we should get Dylan in a message box because that's what we set the first element equal to. It. Yep. And just like properties, if you want to make it read only, you just delete this set accessor right there, 
and we won't be able to set it equal to. It says it is read only. So that's pretty much um, the tutorial on indexers. So see you guys.